Hello from the Pacific Northwest. This is Kristen from kristenwombach.com, and you're listening to Intentional Now Podcast. Answer me this. How does a Baptist farm girl from Oregon stumble upon the mystical nature of Christ? How does that happen? The love of God. If you're like me, Jesus has redefined what you used to say yes to. Do you want the short story or the long story? (laughs) The unfinished book, My Path, is how I learned to see in the spirit and all the barriers and boundaries that said I couldn't. In this show, I discuss what's really on the other side of the torn veil. How I learned and made ascending into a heavenly lifestyle. Can we do that? (laughs) Join me and my guest on a mystical journey. But before we talk about the spiritual woo-woo, you need to know I am totally sold out to Jesus. And it's amazing what the love of God reveals (laughs) reveals. <laughs> Good afternoon, family. How is everybody doing this Friday afternoon, getting ready for the weekend? Do you have plans? Well, I didn't really have plans, but uh, my household is a little bit under the weather, so that kind of makes my my plans of caretaking, you know what I mean. <laughs> Yes. So I want to say hello. And I just want to just cast my voice, my hello. When I say, how are you doing? I'm thinking about Paris. How are you doing, Paris? My listeners in Hutchinson and San Jose and Corvallis and Singapore and Gongzhou. How about Bradford, New York? How are you doing? Beijing, Boise, Patterson, Sarnin, Delhi, Cheyenne, Oka, Dallas, Shanghai, Houston, Lowell, and Alexandria. That was a long name. Alexandria, how are you doing this evening? Frankfurt, Birmingham, Dover, Cebu, Nashville, Seattle, Lafayette, Portland, and Ever. Everett, Washington. How is everybody doing? I love it. I just felt like, oh, I've got to say, these are real people listening, listening from all over the world. I just grabbed a few of my stats and my name, the names there. It's so amazing. It's, for me, it's gratitude on steroids. So appreciation can make a day. It can change a life. Your willingness to put into words is all that is necessary. I love that quote from Margaret Cousins. Let me share it with you again. Appreciation can make a day even change a life. Your willingness to put into words is all that is necessary. So I appreciate so much you listening. And Holy Spirit is here to touch each of our lives personally. Personally, we have this conversation and it's personal. I sit behind this microphone, I write my notes and I think about you and I prepare. And it's personal. And to me, that is a miracle. Now, Holy Spirit is our guarantee to every one of us listening to provide us with the exact ingredient we need today to make our lives full, encourage us, make this episode your aha moment. Yes, like, uh uh-huh, I got that. Yes. Holy Spirit puts the communication in our communion, wrapping arms of love right around us. And together, 
we extend the beautiful grace of our faith. Walking in his completion of destinies with renewed glory and strength. I got to say that again. Together we extend the beautiful grace of our faith. And we walk in his completion. We walk to our destinies with renewed glory and strength. My friend, you are a walking miracle. Welcome, welcome, welcome to today's episode. I am excited, of course, because I've been just gathering all this good stuff and all of my conversations for the week with the Lord and my ascensions. How do you do this? What's going on? God and looking so forward to sharing it with you. So today's takeaways and you are in for a treat. Substituting ingredients. Five ways to strengthen your yes and amen. Poetry of practical living. Engage what you love to do as a weapon of joy. A communion activation. Grab your elements. Just go ahead and pause it and grab your elements, or you can just do it in the spirit. An entrepreneur tip of the day defining the law of perfect liberty, your faith, and a listener exclusive. Yes, I made something fun for us today. Made it, put, can put it into your hands. That's the cool thing. I can put it into your hands, into every one of those townships that I named earlier. That's, ah, oh, that's huge. That's huge. So I made a free recipe download. You'll see it. You, you'll, you'll, you'll understand it. It is the prettiest pink cake recipe PDF. I guarantee it. I like that word, guarantee it. But let's get going. Let's put this all together today because I have five ways to strengthen your yes and amen. Are you ready? <laughs> I want to make sure you're ready because I'm ready. Okay. Number one, imagine. Imagine this afternoon or this evening, this morning. Imagine is something that we do together. Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, I can say the whole thing, Ephesians. Ephesians 4 confirms we, you and I, our imagination is one faith, one body, one baptism, one Lord. We are one gathering or church, one, one God and Father of all. And to me, that's just big. In my own slang, I said, well, that is the end of the story, right? Father of all, you, me, them, us, all who is above all, through all, and in you all. <laughs> I know, in you all. Scripture really says, in you all. I know it's got a southern accent, y'all, right? Scripture says, y'all. <laughs> So we together are infused in one faith. It's not my faith, your faith, their faith. It's our faith, one faith. So imagine with me in the spirit. And this is us and our reflection. We are mesmerized by what we see. When looking in our mirror, right there in our home, it's not the way we think we should look according to circumstances in our life. No, we are not captivated by the effect of a law regarding our own efforts or willpower. That makes us feel mm, restricted. No, today, this morning, this afternoon, today, right in this moment of time, maybe you have your headphones on. You could be doing housework. 
You could be taking a walk. Maybe you're driving in your car, your sound system is turned up, and you're looking in the rear view mirror. Today, right now, he defines us. We are free from the obligation of yesterday's old written codes. Yep, free. No distraction or contradiction can dim the impact of what is seen in the mirror concerning the law of perfect liberty. That's the law of faith. There's no distraction or contradiction. So again, one faith, our faith, his faith, now faith. That now frees you and me to get on with the act of living the life of our original design. We have found a new spontaneous lifestyle. It's a poetry, a practical living. Imagine. Number two, let's get to the story, okay? I like the story. I like the telling of the story. (laughs) So this last weekend, I worked on and off throughout the weekend. Raise your hand if that's you. Uh, Raise your hand. Come on. Raise your hand if that's you. We are all called as creators to co-create with God. See, every one of us is an entrepreneur. So I stepped away from focusing on work. I stepped away purposely on Sunday afternoon because I am already always, I am always Pinteresting in pink. Yes, I created a new word, Pinteresting <laughs> in pink. Yes, you know, I love pink. Okay, so pink is a color weapon for me. While I was perusing through Pinterest, a pink cake recipe caught my fancy. Well, at least you could say the graphic did. (laughs) And I printed it. Yep, I engaged it. I printed it. I pushed the buttons. So by the way, it was a very boring PDF. Um, Yes, very, very boring. So that is my entrepreneur tip today. Okay, are you listening? We provide our customers with all different kinds of PDFs, right? If you are a digital marketer in any capacity, you send receipts and emails and purchase policies and digital downloads and thank yous. You get the point. We make them. Your content stands out in a crowd when your graphics add personalized color. I can't tell you how many times I have purchased a download on Etsy only to be greeted with a PDF full of boring text. Yes, I received the product link, but it was boring. A dream doesn't become reality through magic. It takes sweat and determination and hard work. A quote from Colin Powell. Yes. So let's extract that similar to this. Okay. Let's extract that same thought. Define the law of perfect liberty. Doing the word begins with your undivided attention to face the mirror of you of your birth. A doer of the word means a poet. So we reflect the face of our birth like a poet bends his pen with words. A PDF like that with color and with imagination is like a poet bends his pen with words. So let's get back to that cake recipe, okay? Number three. Remember what you love to do. Use your hobbies and interests as weapons of joy. So the quickest way to refresh yourself within a busy weekend or to relax in a day is to enjoy 
what you enjoy. For me, ah, uh, I couldn't remember the last time I'd baked something. So here I am. I have my recipe and my ingredients out. I have my apron on it, and my husband walks in. Mm-hmm. And he goes, um, what did you do with my wife? <laughs> Again, the power of joy, doing what you love to do, spills over in our homes. And this is a great place to start our communion activation today. Okay, so if you have your elements, would you pray with me? Father God, <laughs> I ask forgiveness for not enjoying the likes that you made me unique with. I like to do this, and I like to do that. And today, busy and purpose has distracted me. Thank you for pricking my heart. Now, I'm going to describe what that means. Pricking my heart? Pinpoint. This is what he did for me, with me. 1 Corinthians 11, 28 through 30. Each one of us must examine himself, herself, before we eat the bread and drink the cup. For Anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body, the Lord's body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many among us are weak or sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. So whoever does not value the meaning of the bread and the wine keeps themselves in condemnation. The pricking of my heart is Holy Spirit keeping condemnation condemned. I know you'd like me to say that again. All right. The pricking of my heart when I ask for forgiveness because I allowed busy and purpose to distract me. So the pricking of my heart is Holy Spirit keeping condemnation condemnation condemned in that glorious oh. so to see oneself associated in Christ's death and declared innocent in his blood is the only worthy manner in which to examine one's own life in the context of the new covenant meal self examination according to the old covenant nope it's no longer relevant so we examine ourselves to see whether you and i are holding to the faith do you get that we examine ourselves examine ourselves to see whether we you and i are holding to the faith testing ourselves we do not because when we do not realize that Jesus Christ is within us then we come and we test ourselves so this is the pricking is the evidence of Christ within you and me that that that's the evidence that's the uh, evidence of holding to the faith we act upon it because our faith is holding. <laughs> Anyone who partakes of this meal in any indifferent manner, either because of religious sentiment or merely because of mm, their blase about the meaning of the meal, eats and drinks judgment upon themselves. The human body of Jesus represents the judgment of every single human life. And to fail to acknowledge this is to deliberately exclude yourself from the blessing of the new covenant. Uh -huh, I know I got some goodies in this. I'm going to repeat that again. The human body of Jesus represents the judgment. That's 
That's what he represents to us and every single human life. And to fail for us to not acknowledge this is to deliberately exclude ourselves from the blessing of the new covenant. So I'm going to repeat that, okay? Pray with me, please. Father God, I ask for forgiveness for not enduring the likes that you made each one of us unique with. Our individual fun things that we like to do. We like this and we like to do that. And I ask for forgiveness for allowing busy and purpose to distract me. (laughs) Dear friend, we, together, you and me, have discerned the Lord's body. Shall we eat together? Now, I read through the ingredient list from the cake recipe, the down, the boring download. Uh-huh. I read through the ingredient list for this cake recipe, and I knew in my cupboard, oh, dear, it's a little bare, and I was missing ingredients. Ooh, yikes. Now what do I do? Number four, the power of substituting. So if you bake it all, cakes can be fussy when it comes to messing with rising ingredients. Mm, Yes. And I was out of baking soda. Mm, We all need rising ingredients. (laughs) Get that? (laughs) We all need rising ingredients. So I engaged the search power of Google and easily solved my problem. Baking powder is made up of half baking soda and half cream of tartar. So I removed the salt that was in the recipe, which was also supported in the butter. So plus, this is what else I did. I separated the eggs and I beat the whites. I would certainly be creating different lifts for the batter to engage. Yep, I was enjoying myself. I was thinking, I was creating. I was outside the box and I was enjoying the likes that God had placed in me. Number five, solving minuscule problems is really about opening the door to wisdom. Let me prove that, okay? Solving minuscule problems is really just about opening the door to wisdom. James 1.5 The only thing that you could possibly lack is wisdom. One might sometimes feel challenged beyond the point of sanity. Listener, hello. Do we ever sometimes feel challenged beyond the point of sanity? I know some of you are raising both your hands and going, um, yes. (laughs) Okay. However, it says, make your requests in such a way that you draw directly from the source. Make them in in a way that you draw directly from the source. It's not filtered through others' opinions. God is the origin and the author of wisdom. He intertwines our thoughts with good judgments. Now, can't you see that that was a Powerful, minuscule problem. Me not having all the ingredients, right? So when you make your requests in such a way that you draw directly from the source. So this is a question I have asked the Lord several times. Well, what does that look like? And Lord, show me how. Get me to the more. What are you talking about here? Draw directly from the source. 
we are here at the however of James 1.5. And I want to understand the however, you know, that they positioned it. However, make your request in such a way that you draw direct. The however. I want to jump straight to the request, but I can't jump over the however. So let's engage the law of first mention to gain some insight. I'm asking questions here, and I absolutely love God's principles. So I jumped right into Strong's, considered the word however. Are you ready for this? This however, that we don't want to jump over to get to the request. It means the ceasing an ankle, but only end, how be it, less than nothing. Nevertheless, none besides an end, especially on the earth, no further as being the extremity of the leg of the foot, the ankle. Hmm. Seems to me, I remember somebody was being born and he grabbed an ankle. Oh, I'm moving on. How be it? Less than nothing? Nevertheless, none beside? Notwithstanding? Nothing? Not? Uttermost part? In Psalms 2.8, ask me. And I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. However, this same however is the same word, the ends of the earth. It's the same one. Let's reword our however from James 1. Okay, I got to reword that. From the ends of the earth, from the ends of the earth, all the way over to Paris, all the way over from New Delhi, all the way over to Seattle, all the way over in our oneness, in our faith, from the ends of the earth, we make a request to draw directly from the source of our answer. Opinions contrary to our mere likeness are of no effect. God is our origin, our source, our author of wisdom, and he intertwines our thoughts with good judgment, good counsel, good answers, good manifestations, good outcomes, and great miracles. This is a great opportunity right now where we are. You can feel Holy Spirit just encouraging us with joy for us to lift the cup of communion. Join me. This is the new blood of the new covenant, the remission of sins. And as we drink, we focus that Christ has sent our problem away. That's our focus when we focus on the cup, on the wine of the new covenant. We're focusing. It's going away. Sickness is sent away. He is our scapegoat. Our financial lack is sent away. He carried away our sin. He carried away our death and decay. He carries away it on his body, on his back. We drink having been remitted. Done. End of the day. (laughs) Jesus Christ has substituted the ingredients we need for life and living. Yes, even baking a simple pink almond cake, joy is released. Joy Joy is released. My dog is snoring in the background. Can you hear her snoring all the way across and around the world? 
I know, she gets to snoring. <laughs> so even when I baked a simple pink almond cake, joy is released. And wisdom has been engaged to hear. And grace has been employed, our hearing. Grace has employed it, our hearing. And our one faith is upheld. You and I are upheld. And every, however, from the ends of the earth, every one of them, that's in the source. So let's run back through our five ingredients and point point that they give rising ingredients to the cake of our lives. <laughs> Number one, imagine. Imagine with me in the spirit. This is our reflection and together we see. Number two, the story. The story, the life application, the law of liberty, enjoying our likes, enjoying the uniqueness that God made for us. Number three, remember what you love to do. Your uniqueness is a gift from above to minister to you. And right here in between three and four, I'm going to tell you a testimony story about the importance of enjoying you. So years ago, yeah, many years ago, I went to a worship conference in Irvine, Texas. Mm -hmm. I wrote about that particular encounter in the unfinished book. <laughs> but this particular point. So one night we had a speaker that was also playing the saxophone with the worship team. And he told us a story how he had gotten... Uh, very ill, so ill that he was bedridden in the hospital and they didn't think that he was going to make it. And so at one point, the Holy Spirit said, well, this is what I want you to do. So he was a famous saxophonist and had many, this was in the day of VCR tapes and Holy Spirit asked him, I want you to bring in your own recordings and play them for yourself. And that's what he did. He asked his friends to bring in those recordings of that they had made when he played the saxophone in worship. And they played them and they played them and they played them. And his own music healed him. Remember what you love to do. It has power. That gift given you in your uniqueness has power to heal you and change you. Number four, the power of substituting. It's creating, it's changing, it's trying different avenues and different ways and different wisdoms. And what are we creating? Number five, solving minuscule problems is really opening the door of wisdom. James, James 1, 5, again. The only thing you could possibly lack is wisdom. One might sometimes feel challenged beyond the point of sanctity, but however... Make your request in such a way that you draw directly from the source, not filtered through anybody else's opinion. God is the origin and the author of wisdom. He intertwines your thoughts with good judgment. Listener, <laughs> who knows what would transpire if today you baked a cake? Right? We don't know. Do Something that you enjoy. I shared this pretty recipe with you. I sure did. <laughs> you can find it in the links below. So I bless you. And also bake the cake. Enjoy the cake. It is very tasty. Take a picture of it. Share it with all of us. 
all of us. You can email it to me. Or if you are social media savvy, you could post it on Instagram and remember to link hashtag intentional now podcast pink cake. This is going to be so much fun. We will all enjoy seeing it because who knows what would transpire if you actually spent time doing that which God created enjoyment for. Yes. Isn't that good? <laughs> okay. Well, that has been totally fun and enjoyable. And you just got to go see my my pretty pink. <laughs> yes, pink. Mm -hmm. Cake PDF. It's wonderful. And I'm going to talk to you again next week. Okay, this has been so much fun. I bless you. Bye now. <laughs>